Welcome to Old Mob 455. It's been a long time since we've even met each other. He's been going up north. I got a Dodge Dart I'm working on. We got a free car for a friend of ours. And I'm putting a scoop on the hood doing that. He's been going up north working on stuff. And we're gonna just do a complete paint job again. We got nice rubber on these now. And the wheels look kinda cool. Then we gotta take all the backing plates and the drum and sand them down, put them together, get this in paint, let it dry, so it's a roller. Then it won't have taken up so much space in here, and then we'll start assembling that. But in the meantime, he seam sealed all around all the parts inside the jam, and then we'll put the door back on, put this back on, so the, these things were taking up space too. So now that's all bolted back together. We got it done, a complete base coat, clear coat paint job for the second time on all this stuff. A couple peripherals here. This time it was done in broad daylight with no wind. It really pays not to rush this stuff. I think this will work and we can move forward with this project. So this is another situation where everything on the bike was old, rusty, and greasy. And in order to get it back together as a roller, and you're doing painting, so sanding, painting, or sanding, priming, painting, and all that stuff. In order to get the parts together, we got to have the wheels and the front fork assembly and everything assembled so that when we get the engine back, we can drop it in. So you got to get your parts done ahead of time so it's just getting all the grease off of them and here's the bottom of the rocker pivots and you just got to get everything you know this is dirty mineral spirits already and then you get them somewhat clean then we put fresher solvent in there then you can finally sand them and get them clean ready for paint but it's just so much time involved and just, you know, if guys are doing this professionally, they have stuff, they just put the parts in there, and, you know, they get cleaned and they take them out and, you know, that's nice. But we don't have that kind of stuff, so it's all time consuming, uh, menial tasks of cleaning. So it was determined that this thing's good enough to put back in as it is. I never did, I was making a tool to take that reverse nut off the um, clutch but I never did get that off so it's quicker if we just clean this sheet metal up straighten up a few little dingers in it and paint it put the cover back on put oil in it and then we can put it back in the frame just doing a quick spray bomb on this piece so when you're thinking about working on a bike it's all greasy and everything, you think, oh, it'll be simple, and it tears down quick. All your buddies are there, you can be ripping a bike apart really fast, but then when it comes time to cleaning it up and putting it back together, you look at this rack of pieces right here, and then there's a sprocket right there, and backing plates, but to clean everything and get it ready for paint and paint, this was a whole afternoon. That's the way it goes. Now we gotta put it back together and make sure that everything's going the right direction. When you're working on a vintage bike, it'd be stupid to fix everything up and then have a crummy kickstand and have the thing tip over and wreck all your work. So when I'm looking at this, here's this wallered out hole here. And then you can see how the kickstand's been wound, you know, ground down. We'll just build this up with weld. It's just like playing pool. You're off by a half inch down here. The bike's leaning another three inches here. Plus this is worn out and the spring was weak. It's supposed to tuck underneath here and then hide away, you know, underneath the, the bike so that you don't catch your leg on it or whatever. But it's gotta be easy enough to kick your kickstand out and not be, you know, you see some guys that have to look for their kickstand. You want it to just be a cool pull up to a parking lot, hook it, get it out, and it's on the kickstand. But 
we're gonna take this apart, see if there's a bushing, and we might even have to weld that up and then file it so it's back to being of the proper size. You might say, why not get a whole new kickstand? It's just a chunk of iron. Okay, so you can see where everything's, this is broke. You might want a new one of these. Because that might be, you know, this square isn't being held in there. This should be like a springy washer. That's been beat up. But, let's check this out. I think this part has been um, wallered out. You could get a whole new bushing because they come, it's got to be flats and it might be just as bad. Yeah, that's tight. But this hole has been bigger. That's cast iron too, isn't it? So you can, you could hone that out and then make a bushing there. Got the handlebars in the bench and we just lined up the grips with the, the straight edge. You can tell that these bars are bent. So I don't know what we're going to do about that yet. Well, it's not beautiful chrome, but at least it's not corrosion. <laughs> 